Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, well, this will be, I guess, part three, I think, for the push rod suspension. I've already run into a snag test fitting, which I kind of knew. Um, it's my first time doing this, so it is fucking hot. It is 100, almost 100 degrees outside. Actually, let me see where the temperature is. Uh, yeah, it is 100 degrees right now. My house is like a cool 68, which is cool. Anyways, um, so I got my first coilover. I know it looks dirty. I'm going to clean all this off before I do anything. Here's the top hat that I had made um, that bolts into here for the upper bell crank. Um, as you can see, it's in the way. Not only that, but this piece right here that, that goes to the back of it you know is is cut down a lot so what i plan on doing i'm probably gonna get flamed for it but to be honest i really don't care as long as it fucking works and i can continue to use it to work if i don't get this push rod suspension to work um the uh i'm just gonna notch that little section that's right there um with a angle grinder and a cutting wheel um i did take the one side off though and I'll show you how it looks. So I got my base plates in. Um, they're going to get welded in and then, you know, whatever piece I need to get welded for this is going to go out. So this is not sitting 100% centered right now, but there's the general idea of how the push rod suspension is going to work. I still have to adjust this side, but what I wanted to make sure. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room. I mean, I got my fingers in there, but there's plenty of room for me to shut that. And then it will be more, it will be more straight once that right there is straight and that's welded in and it's nice and firm. So, um, yeah, there's, there's my push rod suspension and a gist. Um, I should have went shorter belt cranks, but I'm actually kind of glad I went longer. Just because after all my measurements, um, the when the wheel moves up half an inch, the coilovers are already compressed 0.87 inches. And that could be adjusted through the heim joints. Sorry, I'm probably dirty. The heim joints. So there's a lot of people are that out of all the suspension engineers that I talked to um, they told me since I'm doing it this way I, I could run essentially a lower spring rate and still get the same effect as a high spring rate which is great so um, I'm hoping he's right <laughs> but anyways um, yeah, I'm going to notch this and then I'm going to go test fit that. And then uh, once it's test fitted, I'm going to see anything else that needs to be done. Um, really not much left. I still have, so I have my little um, bushing holder pieces. I had to get them machined. I don't know if you can see that. Come on, focus. Uh, anyways, I have them machined. They're a really nice press fit. So once they get press fit in there, the only thing I have to do is build a cradle. I can't do that yet. And I can't get the measurements for that yet until I get everything else kind of figured out where it's gonna be. Mostly because I want it to sit kind of high. Like I don't want it to sit low per se, I want it to make it to where the, the push, the suspension isn't going to bind by lifting the suspension in the air. Um, when it's on the ground, it should be decently compressed and preloaded. I don't know how that's going to be for the, um, what's it called, for the the spring to press against it. I don't know if that's going to make it a bumpier ride. I'm assuming it's going to make it a bumpy ride. 
but I'm sitting out of adjustments, 12s in the rear for my dampening and nine in the front. So worst case scenario, what do I have to do? Just fucking change my dampening to a lower setting so it's not as bouncy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me get this cut and then I will show you guys the results of how everything looks afterwards. I'm really happy how this turned out. I was really afraid that when they machined this for me that these weren't going to line up 100%. Um, I did use this though to draw my sections because uh, this came off the old suspension. It's actually the spacer piece that sits underneath the top hat. Um, but these bolts line up. So should be good. Um, yeah, so I will let you know how that goes. <sighs> There's one thing you should ever do whenever you're doing anything with electric tools or something like that. Where your fucking PPE? I just had... I, this is a new blade, but I just had one of my blades explode. And I am so happy that I was wearing my fucking glasses, my glasses, my gloves, and my, my ear pro. Because uh, it hit my face, and then it hit, and there's another piece that hit me in my fucking chest. I, I mean, the chest isn't really going to bother me much. Ooh, scratch. But I, uh, let's see if I can, you, I don't know if you could see that, but you see that giant gouge that's right there? Yeah. That would have been my fucking eyeball if I wasn't wearing my glasses. So, please, please, if you're, if you're gonna do anything, please wear your glasses. Enough of that. Anyways, um, so I got my piece cut. As you can see, it's, it's just enough so that um, this stays still because I don't want this, I don't want this piece twisting while it's being compressed at the same time. Um, I have a support rod for that to keep it from trying to compress. Um, but this is just like an added measure. So I got it on my top hat on here. I got this on here. It's not like a hundred percent tight, but it, but it looks really good. So let me see if I can get this in here and see what it looks like. This is like a poor man's adaptation, but we'll see. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it set up to where you guys can see it. Alright, there we go. Let's take this old one off. You know, my arms are like really fucking white. Anyways. <laughs> this one in here. Come on. Where are you at? There you are. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. These aren't the final bolts either because these are not long enough for these lock nuts to actually go in and do something. Oop, that see? That's why I said it's going to stop it from turning. So, I have a support rod for that, but there she is. There she is. All right. So the other thing that's gonna help this from stop turning too is when I get my um, piece mounted back here, which I'm probably just gonna do a direct bolt on and weld it straight to the bottom. So it compresses downwards instead of, you know, upwards, so to speak. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this actually doesn't look half bad. I might cut that piece off right here and slot it back. I kind of want to have this like up in the air against the back, but there's not enough room for it. And I don't want to, I don't want to stress the rear portion of the trunk too much. So 
and then this will be sitting right here. So yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. I'm trying to see um, how high this is gonna sit. I'm hoping it doesn't sit too high because I already have that bottom one adjusted really low. All right, so there we go. <clears throat> so, um, there's the push rod suspension. Not centered yet. I still have to get this piece put in, welded, look nice. Um, you know, I'm probably thinking I should take this and then go, like, I don't know, like I kind of want to notch this or something so it's not sitting so low, or I can raise this side up here, but then my issue is, is like all the weight that's going to be on there, it's not a lot of weight in the rear, so I have a feeling it's really going to change the height really high. Uh, I mean, I could adjust the coilovers, obviously, but um, the push rods themselves, uh, I'm worried that they're just not going to be, uh, I don't know, they're going to be strong enough. I'm not, not trying to say they're not strong, but I'm wondering, is it going to be worth adjusting the push rod? Like if I just put it out all the way low? My thing is, is it's jacked up in the air right now. Nothing connected. Um, and I just, I don't know. Well, well, I guess I'll just, the day I install it is the day we'll, we'll see everything coming into fruition. Like I said, if I have to, I still have probably hmm, two inches, two and a half inches left to lower this car. I mean, it's not a lot, but I mean, I could definitely lower this car two more inches if I need to. So I'll have two inches of adjustment. Um, all that stuff will be clean and polished. Right now I'm just working on trying to get everything situated. Um, but yeah, we're getting close, guys. We're getting fucking close. I need someone to like help me film if anyone wants to volunteer their time and lives in Colorado Springs, um, you know, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, <laughs> this is, this is going to look really fucking good. Uh, I got to get the other side out and then I'll put them both in and then I will make, or I will, I mean, I'm gonna take a fuck ton of pictures. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to, um, grab everything that I need to grab, but this should be pretty fucking awesome um ooh, let me put my drink down i need to see now that they have the suspension in there i want to see if it's going to be a huge deal if i uh shut the trunk lid or not and you know that support rod that i'm making to go from side to side i'm thinking what i should do is bolt it directly to the like make like a tab make like a tab and bolt it to like this side right here and like turn this so it's inwards more but then i'll have a, a bar that goes from like this side here to that side over there and then what i'll do is i'll i have the heim joints for that to allow it to flex but it should act like another another sway bar if you think about it um, but yeah, there, <laughs> there it is guys, fucking it's in, so to speak. I can't wait to get everything welded and bolted down and make it look really nice and really fucking sturdy. Um, I should have done a different top hat design. I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, it'd be okay. Should have buff out. Oh, I still have enough room to... So that when I get EDFC, I can bolt it straight to here for EDFC and then I'll like build like 
something to keep the wires from binding just in case. So that ought to be fun. Oh, damn it, I'm losing my train of thought, man. I wanted to see something. Now the only reason I went bushings here instead of building two tabs and then running um, a bolt through that was because I was afraid that the vibration, the natural harmonic vibrations that these suspensions see was gonna start wallowing out the holes for those tabs for bolting the, the piece on. Plus the bolt isn't a hundred percent, what's it called? It's not matched to the size of the holes for the suspension, even from the factory, which is why the obviously the factory lower control arm has bushings in it. So I'm gonna put the bushings in there and yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So, all right. All right guys, so I got the other side done and I'm, I like it, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna lie, I think I might change it. Nothing's final right now. Um, but I, I feel like I can make this a complete bolt-on style kit. Um, so what I wanna do is, I kinda wanna change it up a little bit. My thing is, is if I change it to the style that I'm thinking about doing to make it 100% bolt-on, uh, I will need uh, roughly, excuse me, two more plates. And I mean, I still have to get my stuff done, but the other thing I would have to do too is I would have to move the battery to the back. Um, I don't have an issue with moving the battery. I like where the battery is though, just because it is safe and secured. And it will not move with, especially with the rear uh, seat pushing it back and holding it in, especially the clip on the bottom pushes up against the bottom of that battery, like forcing it against this, this track piece right here. However, this piece right here with these bolts, I am wondering if there is a way... I could take these two off, get a measurement, build, or I take these two off, build an offset track piece. Cause like, don't get me wrong, I love the way this looks, especially with, with the door or with the, the trunk closed and everything. It looks, I mean, it's hard to tell, but I know I'm not a very good camera guy, guys, I'm sorry. It's really, really nice looking. Plus I will have a lot more room for me to um, put the carpet in and all this other stuff so that it actually looks decent. One of the things a lot of suspension people do, especially for the rear of the suspension, is they cross them. Okay, I have really no issue of doing that. And doing it against the brace might actually help a little bit since the brace is reinforced really well, which is why nobody ever buys a strut brace for the rear because it's nowhere near necessary. If I make this a bolt-on kit, I'm wondering, should I release it so other people can have it? Because I, I have all the specs, everything that needs to happen. Um, the only thing that would be on the end user is the adjustments. Because not everyone has the same height, not everyone has the same coilovers, all this other shit. The thing is, is I like the way it looks. It's completely different. I have a feeling, though, that if I go to this other style, I can make it a complete bolt-on. Where I won't have to weld anything except the base plates. Um, the plates themselves... They're, see, I don't know. Cause like there's a way that they're specially bent um, for the, the curvature of the middle coming down. I mean, it's not that steep, but like the curvature is like this going down. 
if I'm able to take those plates off and then bolt it there, or weld a, like an offset tab, where it will have a, a little thing that will have like a pressed in, like the pressed in uh, pieces from figs, the bushings. Sorry guys, this is really hot. <laughs> I'm like sweating, losing my mind, my head hurts. Um, anyways, I feel like I can take this and make it a bolt-on kit. Let me switch some things around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, alrighty then. I know the camera's moving a lot, guys, I'm sorry. So my battery sits right here. Great. If I took these, the reason why I wanted to go this way in the first place was because of how long they were, because I knew they were going to be long. And what a lot of people do is when they do the suspension for the rear, they cross them. My thing is, is that I would have to offset the cross, which isn't that big of a deal. But... Uh, it does change the characteristic a little bit. Um, let me see if I can let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I took this and put it right here. Just this so it sits in the There we go. Now this would have to be 100% offset. Now I'm not gonna move the other side because the other side, the battery's in the way. But if I was able to, That's essentially a triflux motor or triflux suspension that you would find like on a uh, the Mercedes F1 or not the F1 the the hypercar that they're coming out with or Koenigsegg. So one, I would definitely have to offset these a lot. Hold on a tick. So. Uh, Let's see. One would be facing that way. And this is what I was talking about with the plates right here coming on the side. I know it's hard to see, guys. So, like right here, I can extend it out so that it bolts on to right here, but it will still sit high. And then that side will be offset. So they will basically cross from each other. Now, if I do it that way, I could take these plates off, get bolts for these that just bolt in, and get, I mean, this stuff made pretty easy, actually. The, uh, the issue I have is I don't want to move my battery anywhere else. I like where it sits, and it's perfectly centered right where it is. Um, I don't know guys, let me, it, show, tell me in the comments what you think. I, if I make this bolt-on kit without the supplied um, pieces, obviously, it would still be in its R&D phase, which it still kind of is now. Um, let me get the, the support rod. Um, let me get the support rod figured out, put in there, and see what it would look like. If the support rod looks good and looks right, and I have that suspension piece put in, I might just stick the other way around, but I will take those other plates off and see what it would take to make the bolt-on pushrod suspension for the Supra. Um, I was looking last night, still trying to see if anyone had any type of suspension done before. The only push rod suspension I could find was the Mark V Supra 
then that's stupid expensive for what it is. I mean, you get what you get when you pay that kind of money, but the uh, if I make this Mark IV Supra push rod suspension, I'm pretty sure I can order a lot more kits or get more kits made and, and refine it and refine it and refine it, and then uh, it will be available for sale under my my company name, I guess you could say, my brand name. And we'll see. Let me let me get the push rod suspension put back the other way and that support rod made, and we'll we'll, we'll figure it out from there.